Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. Now in this video we are going to go over the basics of adding water jets to your creations here in Stormworks. Now as always we'll go over the components that you'll need. Along with that we'll also show you what each one of them do and finally we'll also show you how to wire it and pipe them up at the end. Now if you're enjoying these videos comment below and let me know what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. While you're there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and remember to click that bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as I gets posted. So let's straight into it and let's get started. So I've gone ahead and loaded up the workbench itself and also added in one of my starter boats or basic boats that we're going to be using for the purpose of this tutorial. Now first off we're going to start by actually talking about the fluid jet itself. Now if you can see here we select the fluid jet it has a couple different options here. Now Logical inputs, it has three of them, along with that connections also has three. As far as the connection is concerned, it has one power input, one fluid input, and then also needs electric. Along with the logical inputs, it has vertical trim and two deflectors. Two deflectors obviously send it left or right and actually change the flow of the actual output of the thrust of the actual uh, fluid jet itself. Now to go ahead and place it down, I'm going to be just doing it in this little area in the back of the boat that we have. Now you can see if you wanted to place it down, you need to place it down on top of an object. So you can see here, if we were to go ahead and place it like this on this flat piece, it would not let us place it. You have to actually place it on something. So you can see here, we're going to go ahead and place it just over here. And you can now see it's gone and placed it on top of those blocks that we have over there. Now the actual fluid jet component itself uh, pretty much has a two piece here one piece at the back one piece here and the center piece over here is going to be a three by three by three piece that means you cannot place anything underneath it you cannot place anything on the side of it it takes up three by three by three blocks in the center when you start moving out to the edge here you can see here that now it only takes one piece there and then same goes there you only takes one piece you can build that area up if you want to now what we're going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and enclose this area over here just simply by doing this you can see we actually Actually building around the actual fluid jet itself incorporating it into our vehicle now as far as controlling this is concerned because we place it down you can see here we have the actual different ports themselves we have our fluid and we also have our power now as far as the power is concerned you can use any mechanical power into this whether it be a small diesel engine a large diesel engine aircraft engine or electrical engines any of those work pretty much it will take that and that's how it's going to actually send the fluid out the back. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to be using some small electric engines. Uh, they're not the strongest, however, it shows pretty much what we need to get done in this video. As long as that's done, the second part we need to do is obviously connect it to fluid. Now, if you're in a boat, I recommend the easiest way of doing this is just connecting it directly into the ocean floor. You don't have to worry about anything else. That means you always have fluid, and obviously, unless, unless this comes out of the water, then you won't have any fluid. So two pipes, grab two fluid ports and get it done. Now you don't have to use the fluid ports, you could use the intakes, you could use the new fluid slot port, you could use whatever component you want to draw obviously fluid in. I'm just gonna be using the fluid ports themselves and that means fluid is coming in. Now the last piece that you will need is obviously going to be electrical power. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect our batteries to my engines that I placed and to the fluid jets themselves. So as far as components concerned, that's it for components. You won't need anything else. Now, as far as logic is concerned, if we go ahead and jump over to our data, you can see first off, we need to go ahead and connect our engines. So probably you would have this done already in your own vessel. So we go ahead and done that. Next thing is you have the vertical trim here in the middle. The vertical trim is obviously going to allow the flow to go up and down at the rear. So you can obviously stabilize your vehicle. I'm gonna connect that to the up and down of the helm. Pretty simple. I can control it from there when we need to. Now, left and right deflectors, how they work. If you want to deflect to the right, you will need to give it a one signal on deflector A. If you wanted to go to the left, you will need to give it a one signal on the left. Now that's a problem because obviously when you go to your helm and you have your left and right, that only works on a one and minus one. So it's perfectly fine for connecting obviously the right side because when we hit the D key, it's gonna send a one signal to both of these, which is in theory gonna turn this over. However, when we want to go left, it's shooting out a minus one signal, which won't do anything on these deflectors. Now, the easiest way to obviously solve that issue now is going to be using a number called inverter. So go ahead and place that down. It's gonna take our minus one, turn it into a one signal, and it's gonna send it over to our two deflectors. Now, one way of actually getting this to go in reverse 
is actually going ahead and giving both deflector A and B a one signal. Now, however you want to do that, you could use a switch box, you don't have to use it, you can pretty much whatever you want to do, you could in theory go ahead and make it go in reverse, which is pretty cool. However, for the purpose of the we won't be covering how to make it go in reverse. It's pretty straightforward, give both a one signal, both deflectors and it will work. Now, as far as logic is concerned, that's it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We can go ahead and spawn this in for the first time. You can see that if we go ahead and get on a ladder, because we haven't sealed this area, it is obviously open, so there is water able to go inside there. Now, if we jump to the helm itself and have a look at the deflectors, if we wanted to go right, you can see the deflectors are now turning to the right. If we wanted to go left, deflectors are now turning to the left. As I said, if you give them both a one signal, they will both go to the center, which means you can go in reverse. Now, as far as the electric engine is concerned, pretty simple, just give a W key, give it throttle, and the engines will go. As long as these actual uh, fluid jets have water and mechanical force, they will work. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If we want to go left, it's going to actually angle it left. There is no need to actually put some control surfaces anymore. You can simply just use the left and right or the deflector A and B from the actual jet, fluid jet itself. And then lastly is you have obviously the trim. As I said earlier, pretty simple. We're going to control it from using our up and down keys here and then that will go ahead and actually trim it up and down in the water itself. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.